I was single for almost a decade before I met Bay. People say work on yourself, and I'm like, bitch, I am working on myself. You know, like that is not everything. I was in New York, sad and depressed and like lonely and sh and like, look at me now, bitch. Like, nothing's gonna keep me between now and this fabulous holiday, but death. So like, if we gonna die, we gonna die. Do you need help? No, I don't need help, I got it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Anise London vlog. We're still in Greece, living it up, but this video is a little different today. We're in a more reflective, serene vibe. You know, very demure, very mindful. <laughs> Bay and I were at breakfast having a heart to heart about self development and growth and how a relationship does or doesn't impact that. And it left me with a few thoughts I wanted to share with you all. So if you're in a cozy, chatty mood like me, go ahead and pull up that chair. We're overdue for some quality time. You know you want to. Basically, we started talking about perceptions or perspectives that you have when you're a single person who wants to be in a relationship. I was single for almost a decade before I met Bay. Now I've been with Bay for about oh, almost five years now. And at least for me, I will speak for myself. And maybe this is something that resonates with other people. It's not that like I was naive enough to think that when you get into a relationship, everything is perfect and you're like super happy and there's not anything you feel like you need to work on. But as a single person who really wanted to be in a relationship, you're always thinking about like the good stuff that comes with relationships. You don't think about like all the work you have to do to maintain the relationship, all the work you have to do on yourself, the compromises you make, the just what a, a relationship takes to maintain itself is a lot of work. When I was single, it's not that I necessarily thought that like I would get in a relationship and life would be perfect and nothing, I'd never have to work on myself ever again. <laughs> But I almost had this like, now it seems silly, but this idea that when I would be in a relationship, I'm in the relationship because someone else loves me so much in a way that validates me, that I didn't think I'd be in a place where I'd still have things that I would want to work on within myself for myself and only for myself. And that, that reminds me of like what people used to tell me all the time when I was single. When I was single, I was looking for the right person. I wasn't getting the right person. I wasn't attracting the right person. I wasn't getting into a relationship. People would always just say like, work on your Okay, my phone definitely died. To repeat what I said before my phone died is yeah, like I would be single looking for the person and people would say to me like, work on yourself, work on yourself. You know, once you are working on yourself, you will attract the right person and blah, 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 blah. And I understand the sentiment behind that. I do understand the good sentiment behind that. But, you know, it kind of encourages this notion of work on yourself to get to this place of 100%, 100% strength. And then, like, when you do that, you will attract or be worthy of, like, attracting a person who's going to, like, be into that, right? And I would just always, people say, work on yourself. And I'm like, bitch, I am working on myself. You know, like, that is not everything. Obviously, there's this idea that we need to love ourselves and love ourselves wholly and be a whole person before we, like, you know, give ourselves into a relationship. But I also kind of, like, just don't like that ethos because the reality is once you get into a relationship, you still going to be working on yourself. Oh, wait, the monologue is not over. I'm just watching it back and I just want to add, like, one little bit. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, as I'm watching back, I remember how annoyed I would get when people would just tell me like, we're going yourself. Like when I was single and it'd be people in relationships telling me that I need to work on myself as I'm like trying to find my life partner. And I just sometimes would feel like, but bitch, you ain't perfect. It's not like you've worked on yourself so much and you yourself as a person is perfect. And like now you've attracted the person. So I feel like that advice is also bullshit. I'm not saying that like if you're dating you shouldn't be wanting to work on yourself. Like, work on yourself for you as a person, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, like, mad people are in relationships who have not done one ounce of, like, working on themselves. Clearly doesn't mean that the relationship is perfect or that it's going well. It would just annoy me so much. I think that, like, in my 20s, there was a lot of, like, you know, third wave feminism, which is good. Yeah, we feminists out here. But I think there are sometimes, like, holes in it, yeah? And, and... In my 20s, I feel like a lot of the popular sentiment was that we need to push back against the whole, like, when Harry met Sally thing about, or like, no, that's a different movie, wrong movie, man. Tom Cruise. When Tom Cruise was like, you complete me. Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. That we need to push back against that. 
that like we need to not indoctrinate people to think that someone else will complete them and make them 100%. You need to make yourself whole 100%. So the ethos that was being pushed on me during my dating era in my 20s was this ain't a Tom Cruise movie. No one else is going to make you whole. So you need to make yourself whole and work on yourself. And that attracts the person. And I get it. It is in ways like a healthy sentiment to share. But bottom line is like, it's okay to also not be 100%. It's okay to not be whole. And we need to not like trick people into thinking they need to be like perfect and 100% to get a relationship. I've always kind of lived by this notion. It's a romantic notion, but I've always felt like go alone and you'll go fast, go together and you'll go far. I, I always knew that I wanted a life partner. I always knew that I wanted to do life together with someone and have like amazing experiences and explore and like, bitch, look where I'm at now. So clearly like I'm doing it. This idea that make yourself amazing, then you'll get into a relationship. Not only is it like false, I also think that it's not helpful because once you're in a relationship, relationships take a lot of compromise. And if you are so accustomed to being like 100%, you're doing everything your way, you're doing everything to the best of your style, that might make it hard to maintain a relationship too. Because you get into a relationship, your partner's going to have other like wants and desires and needs. And like, if you've gotten so stubborn about like doing everything 100% your way, like, I don't know, good luck maintaining your relationship. Oh, and it's also, there's something nice about working on yourself with someone else who's also working on themselves. So to go back to this not so helpful perception I had when I was single, it's like when I was single, like I'm working on myself. Then when I get into a relationship, I didn't really think about all of the continued work on myself I would like want to do. I feel silly saying it now. And it's, it's not that I had this notion, oh, you get into a relationship and then there's nothing left to do because you've won, you're in the relationship. But, you know, the, the, the day before we came here to Naxos, I was like doing a deep clean of my apartment because I have someone who's house sitting the flat. So they're staying in the flat and they're looking after Lily like while we're here. And I just wanted the place to be like amazing for them. And, and when I was cleaning the bathroom, oh my God, that's even like a whole other story. But listen, my brain was fried. I hadn't been sleeping much. I accidentally threw bleach in one of our toilet cleaners into the toilet bowl at the same time. May or may not have caused a situation where a whole chemical reaction of chlorine gas got emitted into the bathroom and like we were on the brink of calling poison control. But I was like, no, I'm not going to die or go to the hospital or be bogged down with hours of poison control nonsense before we go on this fabulous holiday. Nothing's going to keep me between now and this fabulous holiday but death. So, like, if we gonna die, we gonna die. Me, similarly evacuated the flat. We went outside, got some, got some fresh air. Anyways, once that was all done, I was cleaning out the medicine cabinet. And I remember when I was single and I would go to, like, people's homes, people who were in relationships. And I'd be, like, in their bathroom or in their house. And in their bathroom, for instance, I would see men's products, like, in the shower. I'd see men's products, like, in the cabinet. And maybe it sounds a little bit silly, but I always like wanted that I wanted to have a home you know I was single either living by myself or living like with flatmates and like in my own bathroom and just be like all my own and I just really had this romantic notion of like looking forward to the day when I'd open my medicine cabinet in my home and there would be like my stuff and like a man's stuff you know and so I was cleaning out my medicine cabinet and these were the thoughts I was having as I was cleaning out my medicine cabinet like how far I've come I'm in a relationship now I got men's stuff all over my bathroom. And so as I was tidying his stuff, and then I moved down to my stuff. And there were, like, all these products, all these female products, all these um, women's skincare products. And then that got me to thinking about how all of those women's skincare products that are there, they have absolutely nothing to do with Bay. They are about a journey of skincare improvement that I am on, that I want to do purely for myself. And it has absolutely nothing to do with Bay. And it made me think back to the times when I was single, when everyone would tell me, like, work on yourself, work on yourself, work on yourself, be better, because that will, like, attract your partner. Under this kind of notion that, like, work on yourself so you can attract the right person. Now I'm in the relationship. I've attracted the right person. But I actually have a lot of things that I'm working on because I want to, because I want to work on them for me and like 
solely for me. And that also gave me perspective because I didn't think about that part of what happens when you're in a relationship, that you will still have things that you want to work on for yourself and not for the purpose of being like validated or wanted by others. Baseline common sense. Maybe I didn't need to go on a full like monologue about this, but because I was single for so long, I was single for longer than I've been in a relationship. So I think how I was in my single years, how I operated in my single years, how I thought in my single years, that's like a big part of me because it's a big part of how my life was. And it's slowly changing. Like the way I think about things slowly changes because now I'm in a relationship and I'm committed to someone and how you think about things when you like commit yourself to someone is different from how you think about things when you're only committed to yourself. Heroism requires sacrifice. So obviously I've already established it's totally fine to like not be 100% by the time that you get in a relationship. You want to be strong. You want to be grounded in yourself, but you also want to have a certain malleability. So all you flawed people out there that got stuff you still want to work on just for you, just for yourself, that has nothing to do with attracting a partner, good for you. You are fabulous and you are worthy and you are amazing and you are deserving of all the love that the world has to offer you. You've got to believe in it that you were deserving of this love. And I trust you, that love will come. And even if it don't come, you better keep giving it to yourself. <laughs> you better keep giving it to yourself. So one ethos, this brand is never going to end. One ethos that I do really agree with is that confidence attracts people. Self-belief attracts people. That's a good thing to have, you know, just to get through life for yourself because life is hard. But also, if you're looking for a boo, that's going to do you want some wonders. So you deserve it all. Know that you deserve it all. I don't know. The way that I'm like living the life I always wanted to live. And sometimes I don't like recognize it and I'm ha I have to have like a bit of a pinch me moment. But there was a time where I was in New York, sad and depressed and like lonely and, sh and like, look at me now, bitch. I'm in Naxos with my boo, feeling loved, feeling supported, loving myself, still working on myself. And yeah, I guess I'll wrap this up at this point and we'll go back to the room. Bay is working show you guys the place. Maybe this is a good time to show you guys the place. And yeah, talk to you in a bit.